Hi, this is Renee Romeo. Today, my project is building two ottomans for in front of my sofa. So all of the wooden pieces are cut, and I've used a circular saw on uh, any of the 4x8 sheets in order to cut them. So with the modified density fiber board, um, the way that this is going to go, I have a little mock-up here for you to see how it's eventually going to go together. Um, but this is going to go along the side, and I've cut these pieces down. Um, I have four pieces at 23 and a half long by 10 inches high. I have four pieces at 29 and an eighth by 10 inches high. Um, for the plywood, I have three quarter inch plywood, and I've also cut this with a circular saw. And my dimensions for this are 28 and three quarters long by 23 and a half deep. Um, for the pieces of pine, I've taken a compound miter saw and I've gone ahead and cut these down to nine and a quarter inches. So I have eight of these all together. And you'll see the way that they go, um, they're just going to be sandwiched in between the plywood pieces uh, to hold everything up and together. I've gone ahead and flipped the ottoman on its side. So what we're viewing is the very top of the ottoman. And you'll see that I have screw heads in the corners that go into the pine pieces. Um, we don't just take the screws and just uh, drive them in. Everything that, that we do with the screws, it needs to be pre-drilled um, because we have very hard plywood that we're going through and then we're going into very soft pine. So everything needs a pilot hole. Uh, the way that I find these locations for the corners, I have the long side lined up along uh, the long side of the ottoman. So uh, I take my piece of wood and I just line it up behind it so that I can mark two holes for two inch screws to go through and secure that together. So everything is drilled out on the corners. Once that's done, I can take the pine and I can, if you have a nice table edge, you can line this up, but I could take the pine and I can line this up as well. And then I can take my pine pieces and drill bit and drill straight through. So everything's going to line up perfectly. So you just line up your pieces, take your two inch screws, get it started, line it up. And then take the piece by the bottom to put some pressure on it. The bottom is secured to all four legs. And so I've just simply taken the second piece of plywood and placed it over the top of the legs. And I'm going to line up all of the corners again. Uh, the plywood is pre-drilled in the corners, but it needs to be drilled all the way through the pine pieces. So I have, again, the small drill bit in my drill. The box is all put together. And so what I've done, I've taken this and I've turned it on its side. And so what we're looking at right now is the top of the ottoman. And I'm, at this point, locating all of the areas where the buttons are going to be for the tufting. So, quite honestly, the way that I do this is I just look at the piece overall, and I get a pencil out, and I just start marking where I think the buttons should go. And then, once I get a design that's pleasing, I can get out the, a long ruler and start making sure that everything is equidistant from the edges and then from one another. So, it's just a matter of kind of tweaking things back and forth until you get all of these locations perfectly located. Uh, and so you'll see I, I have all of the lines drawn and they all intersect. At those intersections, uh, you're going to drill a hole. And the hole has to be uh, larger than the pilot holes that you drilled for your screws. And they're going to be big enough so that you can fish a, a needle and thread through and secure it to the underneath portion. But you don't want it to be so big that the button's going to fall through. So at this point, I'm ready to cut the foam. Uh, you can't just go ahead and cut this with a utility knife or anything like that. You do need a specialized tool. Sometimes if your fabric cutters at your local fabric store are friendly enough, they'll cut it in whatever dimensions you need. Um, but uh, I happen to have uh, a, an electric meat carver. 
Um, that's the only tool that you have in your arsenal that's going to go through this and leave a nice clean edge along the cut edge. Uh, so I'll go ahead and um, I've marked this out at my length that I need and I'm going to make sure that I'm holding this as level as possible through the entire cut so I get a really nice clean edge along that foam. So now that all of the holes are drilled for the buttonholes on the top of the plywood, I've taken the piece outside, I've taken the foam that was already cut, and I've placed it on top of the plywood. Uh, but first, I've taken some craft bond adhesive spray, and I've sprayed the entire surface of the plywood, and then taken the foam and placed it on top. So it's going to sit there for about an hour. And you really do need to secure this to the plywood in order to prep the foam for the buttons. So in order to prep the foam for the buttons, um, at each interval where we've drilled holes, we're also going to drill a hole through the actual foam. Um, you can purchase a tool specifically for this, but um, they're about $50, and I don't do this enough to justify spending $50 on a tool that I can make for about a dollar. Uh, this is a piece of galvanized pipe. Um, it's about four inches long. I also purchased a bolt that fits perfectly inside of this tube. Uh, so the bolt is a hex bolt and I've wrapped it in some uh, duct tape. And I've shoved it in there and I've gotten it kind of nice and tight and, and squeezed in uh, with a pair of pliers. So, and then I've gone ahead and I've wrapped the whole thing. Now it's in there, but you can see there is a little bit of wiggle room with this bolt, uh, but that's not a problem. It's not gonna affect the way that the hole is going to be drilled. So once your bolt is, is positioned in here properly, uh, I've taken the other end and I need to sharpen this. Uh, in order to sharpen it, I've taken uh, some kind of grinding wheels that you can get at the hardware store, and I've also fashioned uh, a bolt in here so that I can secure it into my drill and be able to drill it. So once that's secured in the drill, I can go ahead and uh, secure this down onto a surface with a C-clamp or something like that uh, to keep it nice and straight, and then I can simply go along the edges and drill this down so that it's a nice sharp surface. Now, it's not sharp enough to cut you, uh, but it's sharp enough to go through the foam and make a nice clean hole. The foam is securely glued to the plywood. Uh, so at this point, I'm going to go ahead. What I've done is marked out all of those locations for the buttonholes on the foam. And so with that marked out, I've already started drilling some of these holes through the foam with my drill bit. So I've got the drill bit and I'll just show you how this goes. It's really simple. Um, you're just going to take it straight on right above that hole, the mark you made and then out comes the, the plug. Now that all the holes are drilled through the foam, uh, the next step is to put fiber fill on top of it. So I've taken a piece of fiber fill and I've cut it to the dimensions uh, that just reach the bottom of the wood. So you'll see that everything's cut right down to the wood. Um, and then I've also gone ahead and I've trimmed out all four corners. So the way that this is going to lay, it's just going to butt up next to one another and get stapled down into place. But first, uh, we need to locate all of the holes that we drilled through that foam and locate it on the fiber fill. So uh, you can either go ahead and make your pattern and lay out all your, your spots with a Sharpie marker or um, what's easier for me anyway is to just go ahead and kind of feel my way through it um, from the bottom so I can go ahead and poke through with a pair of scissors and you don't want to just leave it like that because it makes a very small hole. Um, you do need to clip that hole out in order to accommodate the button so that the button will slide all the way down through to the plywood at the bottom. So let's cover a button. So I have this rubber piece and this rubber piece is it's got an indentation in the, in the top of it. So you're just going to set this down with the indentation facing up. You're going to take a piece of fabric that you've cut, and this fabric that I've cut is actually, it's about a half inch larger than the button all the way around the sides. So I take this and I place it right side of the fabric down. 
I take the top of the button, the button cover itself, and I place it in the center of that. And then I take a tool, in my case it's a, a screwdriver, a small screwdriver with the back of it, and I shove it down into that rubber piece so it's nice and secure in there. Then from this point, I'll go ahead and I'll trim the excess fabric away, and I'll leave about an eighth of an inch of fabric all the way around that button cover. So once that's done, I can take my fingers or thumbs and press that fabric into the center of the button cover. Once that's all nice and neat, I take a back with the loop side facing up. Now this other piece, this plastic piece, it's flat on one side and on the other side there's an indentation. So you're going to take the indentation side and you're going to place it on top of the back of the button. And then you're going to take a hammer or a tack hammer as I have. Now just be careful here with your fingers. Um, what I tend to do is just kind of take each side of that blue cap piece and I'm going to pound this into place. Now if you have thin fabric, you can do this with your thumbs only. You can just press it in there and it'll be nice and secure. But this fabric is a little thick and it needs to be pounded in a little bit more. So here we go. Okay, so now that that's done, I pop it out and you'll see I have a really nice covered button head. Now I'm going to show you how to make welt cording. Welt cording is that piece of trim on a piece of furniture that usually delineates between, let's say, a cushion and a side panel, something like that. Um, and it's usually covered in the same fabric as the entire body of the piece. So in my case, uh, I've purchased some 12 30 seconds cording, and that really is the diameter of the entire tube of cotton cord. Uh, and you can choose any size you'd like. They come in all different sizes, but this is my size. And so uh, what I do, uh, right now I have three quarters of a yard of the, this fabric that I'm using to upholster the ottoman. Um, and that really is enough to get around two ottomans just fine. And the way that I do this is I'm not simply going to cut it straight along the long edge. Uh, I'm going to cut a bias cut. And a bias cut is made by, it simply means it's put on a 45 degree angle. Uh, and the reason why we do it this way is because on the 45 degree angle, you get a nice stretch out of that woven fabric. Uh, no matter what woven fabric it is, it'll stretch a little bit better for you on the bias. Um, and what that does for the piece is when you go around the corners, it'll, it'll really go around the corners nicely instead of trying to fight, uh, you know, making that turn. So. I've gone ahead, I've laid this out on the 45, I'll take my regular pair of scissors and go ahead and just run it along that folded edge. Now that the edge of the first strip is cut, we need to determine the width of all of the subsequent strips we're going to be cutting to cover all the welt cording. Uh, so the way that we do this is to take the welt cord itself and lay it on top of the fabric. Uh, on, on the angle and then take this cut edge and flip it over on top of the cording. Take a ruler, get the edge of that ruler butted right up next to the cording and make any adjustments necessary here. What we're trying to do is we're trying to get a half inch lip uh, on the edge of the cording so that we have something to staple into our wood of the ottoman into. Um, so that strip is going to be a half an inch. So I'm marking a half an inch. And with the size cording that I have, uh, this comes out to be two and a quarter inches. Then I'll take the strip and I'll lay it on top of that cut edge that I just made and I'll use it as a pattern as I go along the entire uh, width of this fabric. So now with right sides together, we'll take the top fabric right sides together and we'll slide it down a half an inch. By sliding it down a half an inch, we've given ourselves two points here. 
we've given a tail at the top and a tail at the bottom. And so from that point you can see uh, you're going to be sewing from the intersection of the two fabrics at the top to the intersection of the two fabrics at the bottom. And then when the seam is put into place and you fold it back out, it'll create one long length that's all lined up perfectly. In order to start encasing this cotton cording inside this fabric, uh, we lay it on the wrong side of the fabric in the middle and fold it over. And so now we're looking at the right side of the fabric. Uh, and we make sure that this top edge here is lined up together. Now I'm using my regular machine today because my industrial sewing machine doesn't handle this type of cording or this size cording. So I go ahead and I put in my zipper foot in my regular machine and I simply stitch right alongside close to the edge of that cotton cording. And there's a close-up of the cording all the way along the edge. Now it doesn't need to be super super tight at this point because you'll take care of any slack you have in the fabric when you go ahead and staple. You'll see behind me I've gone ahead and I've prepped the other ottoman and so this is the direction that we're going in and in order to get there we do need to prep our polyester fiber fill and foam just a little bit more. Uh, so all of the, the holes have been trimmed out of the fiber fill. The fabric actually has to lay in a crevice. Um, so we're going to cut that crevice again with the electric meat carver. So all I really do is just kind of uh, line myself up here. I get the tip of the meat carver into the very center of the hole and I'm going to cut down an inch. And cut down so now I have a nice crease in here and you can see if I open it uh, it's about an inch so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do that on all of the buttons that meet up with the outer edge so in other words I have two here I have one on either side two in the front I also have to prep um, the angles of the corners because as you'll see here there's also a crease here out to the corner. So that needs, that needs a channel as well and that's going to be one inch deep. So let's talk about how to figure out how much fabric you're going to need to cut for this top. Um, the way that I figure it is I, I give myself a little bit of extra room um, and I cut an extra three inches off the entire perimeter so that way I know I'm going to have enough fabric uh, depending on where all of this leads. So I measure up three inches which is the uh, thickness of the foam. I measure over that three and three eighths inches to my very first button. From that point um, I measured down three inches because I know that's the thickness of my foam and it needs to go all the way down to reach that plywood underneath. Then the fabric needs to travel back up. So when you're doing, um, when you're measuring for this fabric width, uh, you need to, to go to the area where you're going to have your most buttonholes. In this case, the area is four buttons across. So I take the width measurement. I add six inches for each button to go down the hole and back up and then I add three inches uh, for the thickness of the foam. So in my case uh, I come up with 64 and three quarters inches um, that'll give me plenty of extra room and then in the opposite direction uh, I take it from uh, there are three buttons across here so I come up the three inches I go over I go down three inches and up three inches for each button. So there's one, two, three, all the way across that comes out to 54 inches uh, in this direction. So I've gone ahead and I've cut that piece and you'll see um, in my case uh, I, I've done tufting before and the tufting that I've done previously uh, has been with a, a much lighter weight fabric. Now you're going to have much more success the very first time around if you use a lighter weight fabric it's much easier to manipulate. Um, the other part about it is, is that with the lighter weight fabric that I had you could see the weave and the weft of the actual um, fabric piece. So what that helps you do is it helps you keep this piece of fabric aligned. Um, when you go from one button to the other button you can make sure that you can follow that weaving 
all the way across so you keep this piece nice and straight and square. Um, in this case, however, it's a thicker piece of fabric. You can't see the weave or the weft. So, um, you know, it's kind of more or less um, just trying to keep things visually pleasing as you're working on it. So uh, it's a little bit more difficult, but um, it's not impossible. So we do need to find the very center of this. In order to find the center, you fold it over once meet all of your corners and then fold it over again and meet all of your corners. The corners are all lined up so here is the very center of your piece. So you're going to take this and you're going to locate the center of your ottoman. And this is exactly where it's going to be. Now from this point, you can go ahead and put a pin straight through it. It'll hold nice and tight uh, through that foam. And then we can start tufting. Uh, I have my electric staple gun. I have three eighths inch staples that I'm going to outfit that with. And that's going to staple down all of the buttons that we're going to fish through this fabric into the other side of the plywood. So for the buttons, I take uh, what I'm using today is some window covering lift cord. Um, it's really, really strong, but if you have some heavy duty twine, you can use that as well. So I fish that through the back of the button. Um, that's probably uh, 16 inches long or so. It's probably too long, but um, better safe than sorry. Um, from that point, I have a six inch upholsterer's needle. And I'm going to take both of these pieces of twine and fish them through the eye of that six inch needle. I also have a small screwdriver. Um, this screwdriver uh, is about the same uh, size as the hole that was drilled through the foam. You could use a dowel or you know whatever it is about the same size. Um, this is going to help me fish that fabric all the way down through that hole and down into the, pl the plywood. So let's go ahead and start that. And what I'll do is uh, I work from the center out. So here's my center. It's marked by a pin. Underneath, I feel where the hole is. Um, the way that I fish this through, I, I locate it on the fabric. Now, what I don't want to do is pull any of the fabric over from the middle. I want to pull the fabric into the hole from the edge. So the way that I do that, I take my tool, whatever I'm using, and I just kind of fish it from the side down in. So if you can kind of see how I'm doing that, that's how that's accomplished. The center is staying put where it's supposed to. And then I can kind of feel in there uh, when my tool hits bottom. Once it hits bottom, what I'm going to do is I'll take the six inch needle and I'll fish it into that hole. So you can, you can see where that hole is. I'll fish it into that hole, and then I'll find the corresponding hole underneath. Sometimes this takes a little bit of effort. Hopefully I'll get lucky here. And I have. So, there's the button. I'm going to fish this through the bottom. You can kind of see maybe underneath where I'm going with this. All right, from this point, I can either take my finger or I can take this tool and make sure that the button lays nice and level all the way down. And get the staple gun in here, and I'll give you a close-up of this as well. Pull it really nice and tight and staple it in place. Here's a close-up on how we accomplish this diamond pattern. So this marks the center uh, where the pin is. So basically, um, I'm going to pull that out and show you exactly how this is pulled. Now we want this to lay nice and flat in here. So again, we're working from the outer edge and we're going to be pulling that fabric down into that hole. 
but you also want to make sure that this is going to lay nice and flat. So some of this takes a little bit of finessing when that's going to be pulled and tucked it's going to neaten up and it's going to lay nice and flat. Uh, all the rest of the buttons are done. Um, I'm going to work on both of these at the same time. Uh, again, uh, pulling on the fabric to make sure that it's going to lay flat this way as well as this way, finding that hole, and then manipulating the fabric again for this middle piece to be nice and taut side to side. So I'm pulling the fabric in as I go on both of them, push the fabric down into the holes and then pull this nice and tight when everything is in place. I'm just going to demonstrate uh, how to finish off uh, this cording on the underneath side of the plywood. So I pull the button nice and tight and then I pull it to one side and I get the staple gun in there and I make sure that I have two staples. Now they're, they're loose and I want the staples a little bit longer than normal because I want to be able to pound them in. So I'll do that. So I'm doing that and now I'm going to pull it back in the other direction and staple it again. same thing. Now as you can see I started neatening up some of these areas uh, where the tucks are in between all of the buttonholes. So this this diamond is actually finished uh, but this diamond I'd like to show you how this is done. Um, it's a little bit bunchy and so what I do is make sure that everything is folded in the same direction so all of these tucks are folded under in the same direction and it, the same is going to hold true for this. So what I do is just kind of get my fingers in there. Now you could do this with a screwdriver um, or a, there's some, a tool called an attenuator that you can just uh, flip under or slip in between the two pieces of fabric to straighten it out. Uh, but to me, this is just as easy, um, whatever works for you. So from this point, take out my little staple. I'm going to move to the center. And you'll see working from the button hole down, I can get a staple in place there. And then the way that I like to finish this is to have the center pieces tucking underneath the end pieces. Uh, it just looks a little bit more pleasing that way um, when it's finished. And I really try not to pull this so, so tight that you're going to crush all this foam. Um, put a staple in place. Okay, now that the center is secured, I can come back over to the side. Again, tucking this fabric into the channel. And what I want to do with these pieces is I'd like to have the fabric come straight from the button down the edge. So as I'm tucking, I want to make sure that I'm not over extending this. And I want to make sure this is really nice and flat. So I try to pull it taut and get it nice and straight. And then I can staple it in place. You'll see in the back that I've completed the first ottoman, and so we're moving in the same direction with this ottoman. Uh, in order to do that, we need to put the sides on, and our MDF is what we're going to be using for that. And you'll notice um, there's a sheen on one side, and then there's like a, a corrugated side to it. We're going to put the corrugated side facing out. It's a little easier to staple into. Um, and what I've done, I've taken one inch drywall screws, and I've started them all along the bottom. I have three along this panel and I'm just going to attach them along the bottom lining everything up 
and screwing directly into the plywood. The longer front panel, I have four screws started along the bottom, and I'm going to do this the same way. And this is going to overlap the other two pieces of MDF along the sides. I have a close-up here on how to attach the welt cord. So it, the MDF is attached at the bottom, the top is flapping open, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to attach the welt cording with a hot glue gun, and I've prepped this piece of welt cord. Um, if you'll see, I opened it up and I've trimmed away uh, that cotton cording on the inside. So I've got about an inch lip here of fabric that's just hanging. And what I normally do is I start in from the corner um, a couple of inches uh, to where that uh, the edge of that cording is on the inside. So I'm just going to run a little bit of glue here and get it started. And I attach this um, all the way up to the bottom of that stitching. So it's come wrapping around and inside here is the section where the cording is, the cotton cording. So I'm going to wrap this around and figure out where that is on this piece so it'll match up perfectly together. So the point is right here. I'm going to cut about an inch and a half away from that, clip it off, then open this up, take away a little bit of that stitching, and test it. So it's going to wrap around the corner and it's going to butt right up next to this piece of cotton cording that I've already cut. And so I'm going to cut it off right here. And now what I have is an inch and a half long tail. So I'm going to chop that down to about an inch. And then I'm going to take this one from underneath and chop it down to about a half an inch. And I'll pull this out. And what I'm going to do at this point is open both of these up and butt these together. So that'll be butted up next to one another. I'm going to take this piece of fabric, wrap it around the mate, and then take this other piece of fabric and wrap that around the mate, making sure that it's going to be tucked underneath this MDF. Now this is just a raw edge here on this fabric and that's just fine because it's not going to be seeing any wear and tear and it, that's going to be the least noticeable seam that you'll be able to. So I started covering the sides and the way that I do this is I take the remainder of the fabric and I lay it right sides together. And I have about an inch and a half overlap uh, just below this cording and what I'm going to do is take this cardboard strip pull the fabric nice and tight, pull the cardboard strip nice and tight, and then I can go in with the staple gun, making sure that this cardboard strip is butted up really close to that cardboard, or to the um, cotton cord, and put a few staples in. Now when I come to the end, at the corner, I'm going to leave this uh, cardboard unattached about two inches. And I'm also, this is stapled into the corner on the other side, and I'm just going to leave it hanging like that for now. Uh, because now we're going to put uh, the polyester fiber fill um, along the sides. So the first thing that I do, I grab the hot glue gun, and I'm just going to go ahead and right over the top of this cardboard, make a line of glue. And I'll take the straight edge of the fiber fill and I'll line it up directly to the top. So the polyester fiber fill is glued all the way around. And at this point, I'm, I've trimmed this a little short. Uh, you can leave your, your fiber fill hanging out a little bit, um, but in my case, it's short. So I'm going to go ahead and start flipping this fabric to the right side being gentle with it because sometimes the staples um, aren't into the MDF probably as far as you might like. So just finesse it a little bit, be a little bit careful. Ever so gently. At this point, let's take care of the corner. Um, the first thing that we need to do is take this smaller fabric um, and go ahead and staple it along the edge. 
Once that's secured, go ahead and trim it down. The fabric's been trimmed down to about an inch and a half off the corner. So I'm going to take this fabric at this point and I'm going to um, flip this fabric up underneath and get that nice and lined up. And the way that this is going to work, um, I have some tack strip left over from a previous project. Uh, in my case, I'm using two different pieces just because that's what I have. But you'll have one continuous piece. And what this is going to do, it's going to lay in um, the exact length top to bottom, pull this fabric nice and taut, uh, and get a, re a real professional look on it. When you're lining this up, the tacks are going to go into the wood. So what you need to do is line this up with the fabric or with the side of the piece itself. I'll untuck that for now. Pull the fabric taut toward you and then you're going to push these staples through the fabric making sure that the fabric is still nice and tight. Pulling on it as you go and making sure that it remains nice and straight. Okay, so now that that's nice and straight, you can see the staple sticking out of the fabric. Now you're going to take this fabric, you're going to tuck it under. You're going to need to be a little bit careful here on the corner. And then you're going to flip this entire thing, tucking it in as you go, into the corner. And now, from this point, you can take your tack hammer or regular hammer and making sure that these spikes are going to line directly up into that corner you're going to take it and just pound it in place so the corner is done and it's been tacked underneath and the next thing to do is start applying the nail head trim uh, now this comes on one continuous length every fifth uh, head has a hole in it and that is going to accommodate um, a nice tack that's going to cover up this hole. And the first thing that we need to do actually is trim off uh, any um, link that doesn't have a hole in it. So I have a metal cutter here and I've just gone ahead and clipped it off. So now I'm starting off with a hole. Now, if visually you don't think you're going to be able to do this um, just looking across and making sure it's going to be all nice and level, then go ahead and draw a line exactly where you want this. Um, in my case, I'm going to have about a half an, or an eighth of an inch of fabric above each and every nail head. So I'll start at the corner. Now in order to finish off this corner, I've got a close up here. So um, this has a hole in the very beginning. I'm going to pull that away. Um, this one is going to overlap it just slightly. So what I need to do is I need to clip um, this end just beyond the end here in the middle of this nail head and I'm just going to wiggle it back and forth. So that's how I get that off. And then the way that this will line up, it's going to come over the corner and line up like this. So it's going to go underneath, if you can see it, it's going to go underneath and then the nail head will go up on top and it'll line up perfectly. So the cambric has been neatly placed on the bottom and it's been stapled in place all along the edges. I've trimmed out above each and every one of these drill holes that I made for the feet. So at this point, uh, the last thing I need to do is put the feet on. Um, so I have these really beautiful bun feet and I've stained and polyurethane them. Uh, so they're ready to go. Um, I removed all the little plastic covers from the screw heads and so these are machine screws. They don't have a tip on them and so what I need to do is screw them into the holes but at the same time get my uh, construction glue out, put a bead of construction glue around the drilled hole because it needs to be a little bit more secure um, because it doesn't have a tip on it to go through the plywood. So line it up and simply screw it in. I hope you've enjoyed watching me make these beautiful ottomans as much as I've enjoyed making them. Um, they're definitely sturdy pieces that will be around for many years to come. And believe it or not, I've only spent about $200 to make both ottomans. Uh, so 
It's an inexpensive project, but boy, it looks like a million dollars. Um, and I hope you uh, can find a way to fit something like this into your home. And until the next time I see you, this is Renee Romeo. Thank you. Thanks for watching. So let's get the corner all stapled down into place. Uh, I have my piece of fabric, and I'm going to just simply fan it out here in the corner. Now ordinarily, if it were a, a regular upholstered piece, I would say work from the center out. In this case, because we have all of this tufting and all this bunchy fabric, we're going to work from the corner to the center. So um, you just go ahead, take your fabric, get it lined up on that corner so it's kind of just water falling over the edge. And then you'll take your finger and you'll push that, push that fabric down into that channel and then kind of um, test your sides here so that you'll make sure that they're going to lay nice and flat. Now mine needs to be adjusted just a little bit more in order to get this to lay flat and I need to push the fabric down into that channel a little bit better and then um, test it on the other side. So this looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do from this point is go ahead and staple uh, my short side, which is the shorter side, right at the corner. Okay, and now that's into place, I can come over on the other side and put a test staple there. Okay, so that's holding that into place. So now I'm on my long side, and I'm going to finish off this corner with just a simple pleat. So I take the fabric from the short side, and I'm going to fold the fabric over from the longer side so that it lays right on top, and we're going to get a nice corner right there on the edge. So I can go ahead and staple that.